I'm sorry, I don't see it for Layla. I know a lot of people like her, and I know she's I like, <laughs> she's like, I know, like people like talking sorry about, about it. I'm, I'm saying like, it. I don't, you know, and I just feel her like I don't get high. it. Her the costume was high. high. When that little girl like, asked her, are you an Egyptian superhero? And she said, I am. I said, I know that's right, girl. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and when say, she was know, flying around, zipping around with her two swords, absolutely. I said, um, MCU, I need you to give her that synergy juice. Put her in the comics because I'm ready to stand. I need it. I just don't see it. I don't get it. I loved it. Her costume was so hot. I loved it. I don't get it. I, don't, I just don't get it. Like, end of the, I will say the costume was hot in the part with the little girl, the Egyptian superhero. That was really nice. That was really well done. I just didn't really feel like she needed to become an avatar at all. Yes, she did. It's Egyptian themes. You didn't think the Egyptian girl was going to become an avatar? No. <laughs> the one, the one thing, the one thing about this show is that. Spider-Man 2099 shirt because that Spider-Man 2099 issue came out and you can't even see the 2099. I don't know. They know though. That's a symbol. Period. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Another Relaunch. Oh, this week I'm going to be Obi-Wan Kenobi. We're taking it up out of the comics real quick and we're going to Star Wars. Oh, and I am going to be Obi Wan Kenobi. I hope y'all watched uh, his trailer for his new show coming at the end of the month on Disney Plus. Um, I'm excited for like them to the, dip back um, into his story. Do you like the Star Wars shows on Disney Plus? I got the Star some Wars of them. Oh. Some of them. Not book of uh, not the book of Boba Fett. They could have kept that. Sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest here, y'all. No, that's Mandalorian. That was good. There's so many. God. The Mandalorian was the Mandalorian was good, but the book of Boba Fett, they could have kept that. Boba Fett, I'm no people like obsessed with that character. He only appeared one time, <laughs> and I like something like that. I think I read an article. And it was like who was he this appeared guy? one time, and he one time and he died. I mean, honestly, the way these movies are going, that's all you need. Truly, yeah. <laughs> and the fans so behind it. Now, that movie for the. The other Spider Man, the like wrestler Spider Man, who's only oh, appeared yeah. in two issues. Um, two issues with uh, Bad Bunny, right? Yes, Bad Bunny. That doesn't make any sense. Miles like, Morales is right there. He's a Latin character. Arana mm-hmm. is right there. Um, Spider Man 2099. <laughs> <Period>. <laughs> so, like, come on. Arana is right there. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, what are you guys doing? Where is my Black Cat movie? Where is my... Mm. It was, wasn't it supposed to be um, Black Cat and Silver, Silver Sable? Sable? Yeah. And it, and it was going to be by Gina Price mm-hmm. Blackwood, who did... What's that movie? The Old God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. We lost. Yeah, I think that's just, you know, Sony is wanting to really build out their own universe with just Spider-Man. And previously... I didn't think that you could do that. Like, there's no way you could have a whole universe <laughs> off of just one character. But Spider-Man kind of like, he got it. <laughs> like, he's driving a little bit. Got more than enough characters for you to build your own universe. Now, if you can they do that competently? That's left no. to be seen. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I know. Although Who they make money, consider... Venom makes money. It does make a lot of money. You may not like I... it. I Venom just don't money. understand it. I will never, like, you know, and that's no shade to the Venom fans. If you love Venom, like, good for you. You are winning. Because I hear really yeah. good things about these books. Like, people say the books are high. And, I, like, what, uh, Al and Ram were writing one. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, we were really? eating. But it's, I don't know. The giant ooze monster with the tongue thing, just, it's, like, weird to me. Yeah, it's not for me. But clearly it's for others. Because <laughs> he winner. Winning. I'm a little jealous, honestly. <laughs> yes. And uh, who are you this week? 
Oh, I'll be. I'm gonna be Ghost Rider 2099. Okay. Because he showed out to in this book. This I thought week. you didn't weren't a big fan of Ghost Rider. I'm or not. Just the 2099 version. Well, the 2099 version in this issue of Spider-Man 2099 that came out was hot. Okay. So we just going, you know, we respect hotness. All right. I like it. I like it. How are you? <laughs> How are you doing this week? I'm doing wonderful. I've had a really good week. Um, it's been very like rainy and cloudy in the district, but if you know me, you know that's like kind of my favorite weather. So I've been going to work and been in calls, and I'm all up and cheery, and everybody's like, uh, pe- I don't think people like me sometimes. <laughs> I walk- <laughs> I'm very much a morning person, and so I walk into work, especially after I just left the gym. I'm like, hey, you guys, what's up? Good morning. You guys? And they're like, I'm not all up in my face. <laughs> yeah, they just be quiet and looking at me i'm like oh you guys i'm like you guys aren't talking this morning what's wrong <laughs> i'm definitely the bitch in the, in the oh. office like why won't you shut up <laughs> i don't know but I, i've just been having a good week how are you i've been having a great week <laughs> so <laughs> maybe people haven't been you know picking up on my like positive vibes either but i have been having a great week um first of all content wise Y'all know, like, Green Lantern, Jon Stewart is my favorite DC character. And if you remember on my panel about him, my one, one, well, I had two wishes for him. And that was for him to finally get his own powers and do his own thing in the comics. And they kind of move him apart from being just a Green Lantern. And I wanted to eventually get a animated movie of his where it finally starred him. So I didn't have to watch all the, the Hal Lord Jordan stuff. And they finally announced the, not only announced, dropped the trailer for the Green Lantern Beware My Power, which is going to be starring Green Lantern. I'm sorry, (laughs) Jon Stewart. And uh, I mean, like, let's be real, though. He is the Green Lantern. But this is like his first movie, and like solo animated movie, which is like really, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy when you think about it, but it's also really good because I'll never forget, Jon Stewart was my Green Lantern. I grew up watching the Justice League cartoons. You know what I'm saying? So when I really started getting more into comic books and like especially DC comic books and the Green Lantern mythos and stuff like that, people be talking about Hal Jordan. I was like, who is this? (laughs) Yeah. I was like, why is he always around and where's Jon Stewart? I was like, because that's all I knew. So it's like as time started to go on, I feel like that was a lot of people's John, honestly. And so it was always strange to me the hole that Hal had on media. And why mm-hmm. he was always kind of like the Green Lantern popping up in like the animated movies and stuff like that. Because it was just like, this ain't who we knew. That's not who you know. And like, it's time to move forward. Um, mm-hmm. I'll never forget one of my friends in college. He is white. And when the Green Lantern movie first came out, he like texted me. He was like, oh, I know this is your favorite character. So like, maybe you can tell me because I don't read the comics. Mm-hmm. He was like, why is he white? <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, you know, there was Hal Jordan before. He was like, who? And I was like, oh, you know, John Stewart wasn't the first. He was like, oh, I only know John because of the cartoon. Like, that's what I know mm-hmm. uh, character from. Which I get how that can be frustrating, maybe for a Hal Jordan fan, where it's like, oh, you know, my fave didn't get picked up. But like, Hal has had plenty of movies and other. Yeah. Comics. He's oh. Do you feel as a John fan that people are kind of starting to get there with him? Like, do they want him to kind of take a back seat and see more of Jessica and um, that other girl who looked like Janelle Monae? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, they mm. I do think that he has got. He's a part of that. They call him the um, the Four Corsmen. Those original four of like Cal, mm-hmm. John, um, Guy, and Kyle. Mm-hmm. The four, the four of them. I think people want them to kind of move out of the way so like these next group can come through, and mm-hmm. John is a part of that. But like, I personally am okay with that because I want him to move on from being a Green Lantern. Yeah. Um, but as far as like the additional content goes, y'all gotta shut up because <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> he hasn't had a movie yet, so it is I what know. it is. It would be nice if he like he's getting his movie. A game would also be nice. Ooh. He's the Green Lantern in the Suicide Squad game. Um, oh, you know, the that's one that's right. The killed the Justice League. That's never coming out. I think I got, yeah, I was just about to say it got pushed back. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? We'll hear about that. But I think that's always if, my most. If we ever game. see it. But 
I don't know. That would be really hot though. And then, mm-hmm. you know, maybe like give him one more movie or he gets a live action appearance. And he could be good. And you know, I like, used to really want a live action appearance um, until a friend of mine was like, do you really want that? <laughs> I was like, I guess it's a good point. It's a, I mean, it could be good. It's it's like a it's, it's like it's, a seventy five, uh, you know, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's quite the gamble. I don't know. I don't know. My phase movie made a lot of money. It's actually like <laughs> the top rated <laughs> one. So I, I, don't, I don't really I, I don't really talk too much. I just take what I got. <laughs> That's all you can do when it comes to them. Exactly. To what you... it's, it's what else you gonna do? I know they announced like a Zatanna project like years ago, but that never came through. They announced Zatanna, Nightwing, a lot. They've announced a lot, and they well, might not even get it. Yeah, I I don't know what they're doing over there. We got to move on. And I mean, especially with like Homeboy out here slapping people in Hawaii, <laughs> oh because they do a like karaoke multiple times. Like that's it's crazy. Alive. Yeah, that movie in itself was cursed from the beginning. <laughs> Truly, like you oh got my too god, many people in it that don't many, have anything to do with the movie. How long ago did we get that announcement? How many directors has it gone through? How many pushbacks has it gone through? Like casting, it's just like it was. It was not meant to be. It was like Channing Tatum's Gambit. Just let it go. It was not meant to be. But they they shot the footage. <laughs> so the movie got to come out, I guess. I wonder if they're going to scrap it. Like, if he's been in too, like, too much controversy, I feel like for them to be like, yo, yeah, we're going to p- still have this movie and have a red carpet with him, like, mm-hmm. showing up. Yeah, that would be nasty. Cancel it. Well, oh. <laughs> 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 we can, we can, you know, oh, well. I'm, I'm totally okay. Scrap the whole universe. We can get a new Aquaman. We can get a new Mira. We can get, mm-hmm. like, we can keep right. Aldous Hodge as Hawkman. Let's let that carry over. Um, yeah. We can keep Robert Pattinson. Zoe, you're on my list right now, but we'll talk later. Maybe we, we might we get can, We can find another cat woman. <laughs> <laughs> We're beefing right now. So. <laughs> I don't like your I don't like your comments, girl. So we can find another cat you know woman. What I'm you can go to somewhere else in a pretty dress and have a good time. Okay? Exactly. So, yeah. Um, and they can always let Margot come back. You know, oh, let her do whatever. I'm she sure she's she's tired. You know, she's been carrying that <laughs> she, on her back for the longest time. She <laughs> has been. What a woman. Like, like she like, is the only like, <laughs> <laughs> I know Margot is tired of carrying that franchise oh, on her back. She is just man. Oh, I'm so excited for her Barbie movie, by the way. Like, oh my yeah. god. That's yeah. that's Joker. I'm ready for that. I will be there. Barbie. <laughs> Opening night. <laughs> Where the cast. I Issa Rae? Yes. <laughs> like Issa <even> Sulu. <laughs> <Yeah. Ryan's awesome. laughs> Uh, Brian Gosling is like my yeah. other favorite actor after Will. Like, come on now, yeah. So I'll be in there for Barbie. I hope everyone will be there for Barbie. It's gonna be great. Do not go see Oppenheimer. I'm be there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started with these comics of the week. And uh, first up, we have a new book, and that is Star Wars Obi Wan, and it is. Written by uh, Christopher Cantwell with art by Ario Anandito. And if you know Christopher Cantwell, he does the Iron Man series that, like, I had dipped into a little bit early previously in earlier episodes that I thought was really, really good. Um, I'm probably going to catch up more when it gets added to um, <clears throat> Marvel Unlimited. But I think he's a really great writer. I will say that, like, this series isn't exactly what I was expecting. Um, I'm a pretty big uh, Kenobi fan. Um, he's, like... I don't know, maybe top five favorites Jedi for me. And um, I was excited for him to get his own series. But this was basically a... You start off with Obi-Wan, and obviously we own the desert planets of Tantooine, and he's, like, looking out over um, Luke. And he's, like, going back into his own hut, and he's, like, thinking, I need to 
write down like my memoirs because you never know what's going to happen. Like this bad storm is coming. You never know what's happening. And we're basically like reliving his past. And he's telling the story about when he was a kid at the Jedi Temple, how he met this girl who wanted to leave and like find this person who's been in her dreams and like go and help them. And she wanted to leave the Jedi Council and he wanted to stay and like go and get her. It's a cute story. But I would think I wanted more like adult Kenobi um, instead mm. of like a flashback issue of him as a kid. And this feels like this might end up being like more of an anthology series of Kenobi kind of retelling his past mm. adventures um, and not really like what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, maybe. And it could just be because his first one is just him as a kid. Maybe we'll show more stuff when he's like a little bit older. Damn, it makes it sound like I don't like the kids. <laughs> Even though I do like kids. They're annoying. They're very annoying. <laughs> but like this was truly just about like him as a kid. He had to be like maybe 10 years old. And um, it's a cute story kids, about him. It's like they're kids. So it's like you can't really be mad at how they act because, you know, that's how you'd expect them right. to act. But it's like it's frustrating also because it's like, why are you doing that? Exactly. There's a moment in this where the girl who he's like friends with, he's like, I don't want you to leave the academy. Like, you're like my only friend here because I guess people pick on him at the academy. And um, she goes and like works with this very bad smuggler woman to kind of get herself mm -hmm. off the island. I'm, I'm sorry, off this planet. And it's like, girl, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to be doing some stuff like this. But again, they're kids. <laughs> it's like, this is what children would do. But it's like, I know that exactly. this is not the smart thing to do. Um, and it shows how, like, Force-sensitive Kenobi is. He's very good at wielding his, like, telekinetic and his, uh, like, telepathic Force powers that they give. But again, it's just a cute little story while he's a kid. I'm hoping the next issue kind of gets more into maybe his teenage years. I don't know okay. if there's going to be a kind of sequential anthology or if we're going to jump around, but um, mm -hmm. it's a it's a mini series about just different points in. I hope it's different points in Kenobi's life because I don't want to read just about him as a kid. Yeah, I can see that. Um, so is like Kenobi like really important to the Star Wars franchise? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that Kenobi like, is like is okay? Do you know who question? Luke Skywalker is? Yes. Do you know who? Okay. Um, Kenobi is the one who trained him and like looked after him when he was oh, younger. Was he was he Liam Neeson in the movies? Liam Neeson is Kenobi's teacher, like Kenobi's master, his mentor. Okay. Kenobi was Kenobi was the younger one that was running along with Liam Neeson in that first movie. Got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got that was him it. when okay. he was young, and he was like, "Oh, I'm like the new like little training person. I'm the Jedi Knight." <laughs> and then later they got Anakin, who became Darth Vader. Darth Vader. Yes. 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 I remember that. Anakin. I Anakin movie. had two. Anakin had two kids with Padme. With Padme, Amadala, the Queen. Yes. 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 You, can, yes. you come. You got it. Yes. I'm here. <laughs> you got it. Okay. And then they had the two kids, and one of them was Luke, Luke. and the okay. other was Leia. Luke yes. was given to Kenobi to be taken care of, and he took them to, like his like related family. And was like, watch after this kid. The mama died. <laughs> and like, I got to be a Jedi. So like, watch after him. Right. Okay. Gotcha. But he like remained, he remained, he like always like, uh, allegedly, I guess that's what we're seeing, uh, that he like always used to like watch like mm -hmm. young Luke, like look after a young Luke. Uh, so I guess what we're going to see in his TV series on Disney Plus is a live action version of him like looking after Luke and stuff. Um so I guess in the trailer, in, in the trailer, he came up to the people who he dropped them off with and was like, "Okay, hey, I think Luke needs to be trained." And uh, the guy was like, "You mean trained like you did his father?" <laughs> and look, I know kind of was like, <laughs> "Okay, yeah, I grew a bit." <laughs> it was like, "Now hold on, <laughs> I didn't expect to become Darth Vader. That's just <laughs> you have to say all." 
I'm excited for his show. I think the show might show a little bit more of what I thought the comic was going to give. Overall, great comic. I think Cantwell is a, a really great writer, and the art was pretty good, too. You get the vibe of Tantooine, and you get the vibe of the, like, Academy. Um, the colors were good. I would give the issue, like, a three out of five. Okay. I just wanted... I think I wanted more Kenobi, not mm. Young Kenobi. And not, like, Young Kenobi. You want, like... So... <laughs> I guess like it, even how he was in you know, like episode one, like how you were talking when he was like running around with um, Liam Neeson. Yeah. If we can get like that era of him, sure. Okay, that would be fun. He was he was cool. Yeah. I think I liked the prequel movies. No. They weren't bad. But I mean, I he think that I've heard that's supposed to be a controversial opinion. I wouldn't know. I think I just it is. <laughs> it is. Of course, you like the, the girl and the gal. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I'm easy. I don't know what you want me to do. That's fair. Yeah. Mm. And I mean, shout out to her. She's coming back to get more uh, Disney checks. Is she? Yeah, she's going to be uh, in Thor. That's. Uh, oh, I thought you meant she was like coming back to like a Star Wars movie. Oh, no, no. Oh, I mean, well, you know, Disney owns everything, so. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, queen of coming back to something she said she'd never return to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, up next is Nubia Coronation Special number one, and uh, this had plenty of writers. Yeah, right? it was um, um, Stephanie Williams, <clears throat> Vita Ayala, both wrote on it, and then we had uh, Marguerite Bennett, Colleen Ronan, I believe her name was. Mm-hmm. Uh, Doran and Daryl Banks and Joe Thompson and Aletha Martinez were all doing the art for it. So it was like a yeah, I did I did see like the different art was like yeah switching between stuff in it. It was a nice issue. Did you read it? No. <laughs> no, I did buy it. <laughs> um, I bought it on accident. So like you know on. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Amazon like mm-hmm. I was subscribed to the original series the Nubia and the Amazon series um, but I hadn't made up my mind if I was going to get the coronation special because um, I thought it was just going to be more just like Nubia being pretty and I was like okay well then I don't need to just get that like I can see pretty Nubia um, and so I was going to skip it <laughs> but like because I was still, I think I was still subscribed to the Nubia and the Amazon series. This technically was like listed as a part of that series. So oh, yeah. my Amazon, my Amazon bought it. So yeah, I will say that like the Comicsology Amazon merge has like changed the way a lot of subscriptions work and like the books are how they're conjoined and what they go into. Because I'm, I've noticed like there are some things I'll be like, why is this pop back up to the top of my comic book list? What is this? And then I realize yeah. like it ties into some old series. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Mhm. Yeah, the way they like list all these books are random, but well, whatever. The issue was the issue was nice. I skimmed it because they I bought it, so I did look through it, and um, the art was really nice. Yeah, I like I like really nice. I like that it would like swap between this like very kind of pop bright mm-hmm. style to like a different yeah. style. Um, so basically, Nubia is going through her coronation to become queen, like of all the Amazons, because of all the stuff that happened in the trial. They've come together to like mm-hmm. all contest that she is the one true queen of all Amazons and start this new piece. That they have opened up their borders, so they're allowing mm-hmm. outsiders to come and visit the mascara and like see all this and what's going on. And while they're preparing for that, we are seeing the flashes of Nubia's life that she's lived. So we see her pre her pre-death like before she became nubia and she was a uh, zavanna a uh, princess warrior warrior princess of a tribe and she was living her life doing stuff there and she ends up getting betrayed by a guy who kills her and then like that's when she becomes uh nubia it's always a man always a man never fails and then we get like another flashback to her as like Nubia when one of the first times she went to Man's World and how she got arrested because she was protecting some woman from an attacker. But of course, 
they're like, no, you seem to be in the wrong. And they talk about how he's this deputy, I mean, the mayor's son, and he's a white guy. And they talk about, like, her being this black woman in this Amazon and all of this stuff like that. (sighs) (laughs) (laughs) You did not need to sigh so loud. (laughs) I'm just listening to the synopsis. (laughs) And, you know, and just, like, how that affects her and, like, and, like, the guy who she was talking to, how he was a black man and, like, you know, how, just how that's looked at and how that's worked <laughs> into all of that. And so the end of the issue, you know, just goes about and we, um, Nubia is the queen again and it's going to lead into her next series where she's doing her first tour of Man's World as queen. Okay. Um... So. It was very nice. I think it was interesting. Uh, I think I skimmed through and I did see that um, that cop was Martian Manhunter, right? Was that supposed to be who that was? Oh, is that who that was supposed to be? That's who I thought it was. Oh, he was like, I, I guess that makes sense. He did say, "I I know Diana," and I yeah. He when that. he's he like you see his face. <laughs> it's green. <laughs> is it? Oh, 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 that's right, that's right. I you, I completely skimmed past that panel. Because oh. it was her in, in handcuffs in jail. You know, I just, okay. I guess, yeah, so that was the issue. It was nice to be told, yes. Yeah. Um... I would give it a I would give it a, a three out of five. I think it was a solid, nice issue. I liked a lot of the different art styles. I liked there was insight into Nubia and kind of her life with the Amazon. She's got her little girlfriend, and it was nice to see all the Amazons together again. I think the thing of them opening their borders is really interesting. Something similar happened in Aquaman during the Dan Abner run. They like set up a little embassy for people to come because he was trying to like make uh the surface in Atlantis a lot more conjoined and how they work together. So that was really nice to see the them scared do their own little version of that. Is there anyone you'd like to see come to Themyscira in this new age of Nubia being queen? <clears throat> Not really. I wanted to see my girl Vixer. Oh that would be fun. That actually, oh, that actually, yeah, okay. I, I want to see my girl Vixen pop up <laughs> and say, what y'all doing over here? <laughs> I heard y'all be tussling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm here that, for the games. <laughs> I, that would be too high, and i like to see that. It would be really interesting. We'll see. I, I kind of hope Vixen also gets a little bit more play in this whole Dark Crisis, D- Death of Justice League stuff. I don't know if I should be offended or grateful that she wasn't called with, like, the rest of the leaguers when they died. But it's like, it would have been nice to kind of have her be recognized with that group as, like, the main leaguers, the most powerful ones. And But then on the upside, like, she would have died. I mean, on the downside, she would have, like, quote-unquote died. But then it's also, like, if she wasn't involved in that, that does leave the room to her for her to be involved in this event. But it would suck if she's not even thought of, which I yeah. think she would be. I hope that someone gets to use her in that too. Um, she deserves. But if she does pop up anywhere, I could see her <laughs> popping up in Nubia's book during her world tour. So, oh yeah, I forgot she is going on this tour. And is that something that all the queens do? Is that what Hippolyta did before she died? No, like, I'm, is that why I, she was on the Justice League? I'm not going to lie. No, Hippolyta joined the Justice League because Diana was dead. Oh. Uh, the girls are dropping like flies. All the time. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> That's true. They, they do. Hmm. Okay. Definitely. Well, uh, definitely check out that coronation issue, guys, for some more Nubia content. Up next is Spider-Man 2099 Exodus Alpha number one. And I know Miguel O'Hara is one of your favorite characters, so let yeah. us know what happened in this issue. Um, so this was uh, Steve Orlando and uh, what was the artist's name? Paul Fry was doing the art. And so the issue itself is kind of like fine. I think Steve Orlando is a really good writer. I think he gives, I don't say this word in a bad way, but like generic superhero stuff. 
um, it's like you know you're that's not a bad thing. I like that stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Uh, you kind of know he's gonna like really he's gonna tackle a lot of themes surrounding like family and like um, just helping people and the greater good and like all of those things that you really like in your superheroes. And so I think the thing is it can feel a little bit like awkward sometimes for certain heroes, especially like when they're not like super that way. It's just like, oh, okay, this came out of nowhere, but he does it really well. I think this issue of the Exodus Alpha is kind of reintroducing us to Miguel O'Hara and his world in Nuevo York and him as Spider-Man and like how he gets his powers. There's this group called the Cabal and they're like going around doing bad stuff to the people in town. And it's basically just him kind of going around trying to figure it out and stop it. At the end, we do find out that they have resurrected their own uh, Norman Osborn and that, like, he is in charge of this entire group, which I thought was, like, a nice, fun reveal. And then we also see Ghost Rider 2099 in here, and he helps Miguel do something. And and I will say, like, again, I'm not a big Ghost Rider fan, but, like, the way he helps him and the way they use his powers and stuff like that, that was really interesting. They also introduced Mysterium into the 2099 universe. And for those who, you know, have been reading the books, Mysterium is the uh, the currency and metal that the mutants created for when they did Planet Araka and everything like that. So I was like, oh, that's cool to see that, like, this is still around. And it also gives me hope that they'll bring in the X-Men 2099 group, because I really love them. Crystalline and Cerebra and the Lacuna. Ah, Queens. <laughs> I was not there for that. Uh, um, I missed out on all the, like, the X-Men 2099 stuff. You should. I think some of it might be on Marvel Unlimited. Don't quote me on that. I could have just made that up. But I feel like it is. And so like, I always highly recommend people go back and like read some of that stuff. And even like um, Miguel's former books, he has a Spider-Man run by Peter David that I like highly recommend. He had a really oh, cool... Oh, classic, yeah. Um, Good stuff there. Yeah. If you want to ever get into Miguel has had some solid stuff. I like Miguel. He, he's, he's he's truly my favorite Spider Man. Like and everybody knows, I don't dip too heavy into the Spider World that often. But anytime something happens with Miguel, I tune in. But honestly, and this is why I like the 2099 universe. A lot of that stuff is really kind of good. Hmm. It's like I like I like Miguel and his stories. They're pretty good. They do a lot of really fun things with them. It's not one of those like multiversal things where you're just seeing different versions of the same person Variants, yeah. you know, these are like new characters like living their own lives and like it's just in the future so that's really yeah. cool also close to think about how like close we've gotten to 2099 <laughs> 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 it, like, it just makes you think you know should the world still exist by that time um, and Marvel is still making comics for some reason then what are they going to call it? <laughs> right. right. By then, it'll all be MCU. <laughs> it'll just be. Yeah. But or maybe they'll, maybe they'll, get, they'll probably get it right with the comics by then. And like. That'll be the universe. Finally make them look hot again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine in like 2099 still reading about, I don't know, if Batman and Catwoman are going to get married? Oh my gosh, that'd be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that would be so annoying. <laughs> I'd be like, oh yeah, it's time to give this up. <laughs> <laughs> or like any any of those will they won't they things, and they still out there doing it. Like what? Come on. Ooh, can you imagine? Ooh, the twenty ninety nine Jean fans calling for the Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I she needs it. Hopefully by then they can give it to her. Mm, I don't know. Echo Phoenix is making her mark. The little fiery handprint is hot. You know, I've really been thinking about like they could really like never give Gene the Phoenix Force in live action. Like if fans, they seem to be pretty responsive to what fans want. So if fans like want Native American Phoenix and mm-hmm. not like Gene Phoenix, they could easily do that. And Echo exists in the MCU already. Yeah. Shout out to the actress. I did like her a lot. She's great. I'm really, I'm, well, I don't know if I'm really excited about her show, but. Oh, why? Because of Night? Um, just because of like phase four as a whole. But I know we're going to talk about that a little bit later. You know what? That's a perfect segue. Let's go ahead and take a break and then we'll come right back <laughs> with some Moonlight <Blue> Talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey. 
You know what I always love? Like, if you ever go into the Pop Crave comments, the stains will be in there, and they'll be like, oh, Queen Olivia. And then there's some who will reply after them and be like, who? <laughs> <laughs> the stand or, comments are funny. Or they'll be like, a flopping. <laughs> and it's just like... <laughs> I always think... Oh, from, that reminds me of my stand days. Oh, <laughs> old days. You know, One of time. Like, it's good to see. Twitter, mm. Twitter was a different, a different app back mm -hmm. in like mm -hmm. 2012, like 2013. Dark times. <laughs> I mean, it still gets a little dark now, but yeah. it was some real dark stuff there. Oh, I'm ready for it to get dark again for when um Black Panther two comes out. That's gonna be a mess. Oh, people gonna be nasty. <laughs> it's gonna oh, be man. real bad. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, but. <laughs> Speaking of the MCU, we are here and back to talk about the Moon Knight finale. And, um, you know, uh -oh. they had me <laughs> and they lost me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> now, okay, oh, no. so let me let me say this. I, I have been saying since I want to say episode three or four or so that I did not feel as though I was going to be satisfied with the ending of this show. And yes. I do say that that is true. I was not satisfied. However, that's not to say I didn't like a lot of stuff. I found a lot of frustrations just when I think about the series as a whole. And I was like, um, tweeting about this a little bit earlier in the week, too. And it was just, you know, the finale especially felt like four different shows kind of crammed into one. That first maybe like 20 to 20, 20 to 30 minutes of it, I legit like kind of had to sit up off of the chair I was in and I just like had my chin in my hand and I'm like staring at the screen and I'm like what is going on right now what am I watching um but then you know that was like an issue I think I've had with the entire show I feel like the pacing has been a little bit strange and that we've had to like kind of rush through certain things and like take more time on other stuff that we didn't necessarily need to be on and so I just like felt like this finale didn't change any of that um that said there were a lot of aspects that i did still really like i loved um of course anything with like oscar just kind of like acting the emotion and stuff between his his reunion with steven i thought was really well done um i really enjoyed the scene where they kind of did get into the big fight scene with um harold and his goons like in the street and like how he came down i feel like that was a lot of that like hard-hitting stuff that you wanted to see Come from on, mr Nightwing. knight and you, know, <laughs> and, you know, he had his little baton down. He was doing that, and um, I thought that was cool. I think Khonshu continued to be a really, like, bright spot of the show in the way he talked and his humor and stuff like that. And I really liked Amit as a villain. I thought, you know, her kind of goal was bad. You know, it's something that you do want to stop. She just wants to consume everything. She she reminds me of Celine and Necrotia. Because, like, that was her oh, whole thing. Yeah. She, like, trying to consume souls to, like, do all that. And I thought that was what she did seem terrifying. Um, there were some parts I still... I'm sorry. I don't see it for Layla. I know a lot of people like her. And I know she's I like... <laughs> she's like, I know, like, people like talking sorry about, about it. I'm, I'm saying like, it. I don't... You know? And I just feel her like, I don't get it. High. Her the costume was, was high. high. When that little girl but, like, asked her, are you an Egyptian superhero? And she said, I am. I said, I know that's right, girl. Absolutely. <laughs> and when like, she was know, flying around, zipping around with her two swords. Absolutely. I said, um, MCU, I need you to give her that synergy juice. Put her in the comics because I'm ready to stand. I need it. I just don't see it. I don't get it. I loved it. Her costume was so hot. I loved it. I don't get it. I, don't, I just don't get it. Like, in the, I will say the costume was hot in the part with the little girl, the Egyptian superhero. That was really nice. That was really well done. I did. It was like, oh, that's cute. But like Layla, as a, Layla always just felt so convenient to the plot. You know what I'm saying? It was just like anytime, like, of course she could fight. Of course she could like have the knowledge of all the history. Of course she had like all of this. Of course she it wants to be the next avatar or they want her to be the next avatar. And it was just like, of course she somehow sneaks onto this uh, convoy of people with Hero, and like nobody recognizes that we got a whole extra person right here. And it was just kind of like, whatever. And then like she had to become, and then even the scene of her becoming the avatar, like, uh, 
talking to the hippo goddess and they start talking about like her and the dad i felt like that was kind of one of those times where it was a little awkwardly placed for the humor that the marvel universe likes to kind of employ and i was like girl she don't hurry up and transform but then she transformed i, I did I think i liked her i liked the, her her conversation with herself it really like kind of showing her her own acting ability in comparison to um isaac's like I, obviously Oscar was great, but I did a, I liked her kind of bouncing back and forth between the two. The voice is obviously the voice of the hippo is a lot more comedic than um, than her own, but I appreciated the two of them kind of like going back and forth. I didn't like the fact that like, oh you know what? Actually I did. She didn't like instantly say like, oh yes, I'll be, become someone's avatar. She really is against like, or at least was anyway, like trying to be someone's avatar, and so she really kind of needed to. And that's my other thing. I just didn't really feel like she needed to become an avatar at all. Yes, she did. It's Egyptian themes. You didn't think the Egyptian girl was going to become an avatar? No. <laughs> <laughs> Me. The one the one thing the one thing about this show is that uh Moon Knight's character has a lot of intersections that don't really mm-hmm. fit his own background. That and I was afraid that they were going to either skim over some things or just not even do some things just to kind of appease all the crowds that they could by just, we will make everybody happy by just not doing anything at all. But Mm -hmm. um, they made sure, in my opinion, to really kind of cover their bases. They really, they Mm -hmm. showed that um, Mark is Jewish. They obviously also have to play into the fact that Oscar Isaac himself is of like a Latin background, so they made sure that character was also Latin. I think Jake Lockley, I uh, think, is going to be the one that's a lot more. Uh, what a reveal! And, stuff. <laughs> and then on, on top of all of that, Moon Knight is an Egyptian themed character. Mm-hmm. None of the people who I just talked about are Egyptian, <laughs> so <Yeah>. it's kind of <laughs> awkward that like <laughs> eventually people would have asked for an Egyptian Moon Knight. Like mm-hmm. and so, to me, when they when they had Layla appear on the show, I knew that the actress herself is um, Egyptian. She's Egyptian and um, Palestinian. So I was like, mm-hmm. okay, well, like um, they're probably gonna have her suit up because like <laughs> there's no way you have like an Egyptian themed character with a white man in it, like or <laughs> or a Spanish, a half Spanish, half Jewish man in it. Like you've gotta. <laughs> Show a little bit of like, yes, he was everything but Egyptian. It's like I'm not opposed to them having the Egyptian hero. I think that is great. I just don't want Layla. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I just don't like Layla. (laughs) Like she didn't need to be anything. She could have went somewhere else, Mm -hmm. and we could have pulled anybody. Um, by the way, she does uh, the character she becomes the Scarlet Scarab is a real comics character in Marvel. Um, it's a guy who we haven't seen in like forever. So I do anticipate (laughs) someone looking like Layla showing up. As a new star that's scared sometimes. When that happens, I'll be right. I'm sorry, Moon Knight fans. I'm in the camp I mean, when she shows up. Um, I mean, comic Scar the Scare might be hot if it's Layla, but like mm, Layla in the show, I don't know. We can find another Egyptian girl, maybe, who's interesting. I don't know. I liked her. I think that like I'm maybe interested to see how they end up using more of her or how they can like further develop her character. Um mm-hmm. I I don't think that she was really a Mary Sue the way that, that you're trying to describe her to be, but I I think that she uh, I thought she was dope. Well, I mean, people like her, so that's great. Um, the Jake Lockley reveal I thought was really great. And yeah, how, yeah, I thought that was dope. And how he was sitting there, and again, it's one of those things that's like frustrating because now we know that this is a mini series and it's done, and we might not. Who knows when the next time we'll see Moon Knight? And even when we do, it probably won't be like the Jake version. Well, I don't know. Maybe it will be. And we'll get more of that. I don't know. The show was fine. I think you mean the violence of Jake? Yeah. You mean like those slow slow that down? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think this. I don't think it's getting a second season. Um, no, I don't I think, think so that one, The one thing I think that people sometimes may forget about a lot of these Disney Plus shows is they are limited series and not like mm-hmm. TV shows. So basically, they're just in, it's like an extra hour of a movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, it's not like we're getting 
15 more. episodes of a season that's like specifically being they bring in new storylines to keep the character development going and all this kind of stuff it's just a double featured movie basically um and uh i think sometimes the expectations can be for a tv show to really dive into a lot of stuff and really like mm-hmm. this has six episodes of a show six yeah. to eight episodes of a show and then that's it we might never see him again and it's like, wow. <laughs> and it's like, oh, wow, if I never see him again, it's like, oh, this is what I got. And it's just like, oh, okay. I think as a whole, I will put the show, like, towards the middle of, like, just any Phase 4 project. If I had to put all of them together, this would be somewhere in the middle. I didn't I didn't hate it. I liked a lot of aspects of it. But there were some things that I just wasn't a fan of. I, again, still think there was a lot of, like, pacing issues. Um, but... I'd watch a, I'd watch certain episodes again, and I can't say that for a lot of the other Disney Plus shows that have come out so far. Yeah, when it comes to Disney, not just Disney Plus, superhero content in general, like my biggest takeaways from them are comic book accuracy, mm-hmm. um, and just overall like entertainment and like was it enjoyable? And will I like will I go back and watch it again? And for me, I don't have as much comic book knowledge about Moon Knight outside of, like, peripheral stuff that I've seen him in mm-hmm. and, like, in whenever he made cameos in other books that I would read. Um, so I can't really speak to the comic book accuracy. But, like, I had a great time. I enjoyed it. I, I, w- I didn't groan at a lot of stuff, and I could see myself, like, rewatching this. So for me, it's more of a top-rated Disney Plus show, probably. Okay. If I sat with it and, like, looked at the other ones, I don't know, probably top three of the, what, five or six that they've had so far. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed the series. <clears throat> I'm happy you liked yeah, it. Yeah, it might have made me more happy. of a Moon Knight fan, yeah, to be honest. Like, I... Moon Knight Welcome. <laughs> yeah, like, I was like... We'll send you some crescent darts in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the... They were cool in the show, too. I like those. Yeah, they did look good. I like the crescent darts. That was how... The one and problem I, I... I had... The only problem I had with this show, though, were a few times the CGI looked a little wonky. Something mm. about Moon Knight in the daytime does not look good. Like... Yeah, that's why it I was... Yeah, the, it's the, the bandage <laughs> costume. Yeah. Though, that one... There was a point where he first suited up when he like came back to life, and it was giving PlayStation Three. <laughs> <laughs> I also will say the super villains I think were always good. Like yes. from the very from the first episode when he like went into the bandage costume, and then like when Steven first appeared in his night costume, that was cool. When we saw Khonshu in the suit at the end, um, that Khonshu was like, good. Yeah, he was looking great the whole time. Yeah. He was a good guy. Um, so that was. I'm sorry. And when Scarlet Scarab came through with her little bang over her eye, yes, <laughs> her swords and her wings, absolutely, I loved it. I don't get it. I don't the see doll. it. The <laughs> dog. I, I, I just don't see it. Like I just do not understand. But she, just, I mean, she is like shout out to her because she's taken off. She's gotten and the fan art I've seen, the Moon Knight fan art in general. I don't know yeah, if anyone like the Moon Knight fan art. Like, Go to the Moon Knight tag on Twitter or like Instagram. I'm sure it's some there. Uh, Tumblr, if you're still on that, I don't know. Which you know, Pinterest, Pinterest, all of that. The people can draw, and they have been drawing the hell out of these characters, especially after that finale episode. I saw a lot of Moon Knight and like Scarlet Scarab art together. Fantastic stuff. I Just think keep... out of all of the Disney Plus shows outside of WandaVision, I think this one was the one I've seen the most fan art for. Where like. Mm-hmm. People are constantly drawing Moon Knight stuff. I love it. There's a lot, there's a lot of it out there. <laughs> They're really good. It's good. It looks good. I wish I could draw. I would just. I would just <laughs> Maybe it's better that I don't. Yeah. But I would draw them I doing like wish, crazy stuff. <laughs> I did wish that there were like a few more like action and fight scenes in this. Um, okay. Again, I realized that their the budget went towards you know booking Oscar Isaac and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and everything else that kind of came along with the show, but I wish there were just a few more, like, fight scenes. Yeah, this one had cool. the finale. The finale had some a bunch of them. I did also really like when they would switch between the two, yeah. and um, it would be Moon Knight, or I would call him uh, Mark Knight, <laughs> Mark <laughs> Knight for a while, <laughs> and um, Mr. Knight. I liked when they would like switch between. Yeah, that was fun to see. It was nice to see them working together in that way. Oh, if only Jake could have been there too. Mm, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. 
it's definitely coming. I'm, I'm sure Moon Knight will be in the next Marvel project. You don't get Oscar Isaac for nothing. Okay, say that. Oh, what am I expect? <laughs> they gonna use it again. Man. We'll see. Probably Isn't he'll be in like the next movie. Mm, I can see that. Maybe like you said, something with Midnight Suns is gonna come. He might pop up in like that um, Werewolf by Night Christmas or Halloween special oh, thing. Oh yeah. Got he probably actually definitely will be there. Yeah, because they have history in the comics as well, so it makes sense. They friends? Mm. Uh, a little bit of both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Those we'll are the best guys. A, a cool little fight. So, we'll see. Mm. What would I you like. rate the finale? Ooh, out of five? Yes. I'd give it a three. Okay. It was cool. I'm like I said... Four. There were like parts of it that I liked and enjoyed. I still think like a lot of that pacing and stuff. The second half of the episode, I enjoyed a lot more than the first, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, what about the series as a whole? <laughs> also a three. <laughs> okay. I was like, I would give the series as a whole a four. Also oh a four. wow! Okay. Go on, Moon Knight fan. I love it. I don't it. think it. I don't. I don't think it. I don't think it's. I don't know. The more I keep thinking about it, I think it's. I don't. I think it's as good as WandaVision. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably my favorite one. But I think. I think it followed the same. I form think it had a lot of like. Yeah, and I think it had a lot of the same kind of intrigue to like what was going on in his mind. We are also like, kind of confused what was going on, which is very giving the, the like the the mental state of someone who is dealing with different identities um mm-hmm. where you just i remember i still didn't know what it exactly was real until we got to this finale like mm-hmm. was the moon Knight stuff actually happening what was actually going on in his head well like what's real mm-hmm. um and so i did appreciate all of the like the mystery and stuff behind it and like i said oscar isaac was acting he was he was acting very well also didn't um, also didn't mind harrow and shout out to i i think mm, I'm gonna i didn't this. like harrow really I think I might mispronounce his name, but uh, Bill Sinkovich was the guy who like drew Moon Knight's first uh, comic, and they named the hospital after him, the psychi- psychiatric hospital after mm. him. In the show. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, a nice Easter egg. I didn't even know. And he pulled up in the limo at the end. Yeah, the limo I was liked high. it. I was like, I was noticing all those kind of things. I was like, oh, this. I saw his name on the outside of the psych. psych- psychiatric hospital mm-hmm. and when he pulled up in that limo i was like oh this is like the moon Knight i know because when we first read that war moon Knight series that was the first thing i saw I was like he really like brought around in the limo <laughs> <laughs> he's rich <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. and like i said I did, there were a lot of parts of the show that i really did enjoy and i think the stuff that i enjoyed i really enjoyed but i just felt like it was always very rocky road to get to that um, do you ex- do you want more Moon Knight? I do, absolutely. Okay. I, don't, I don't know. You know, again, it's kind of like touch and go with the MCU and the phase. But yes, and I know we're gonna talk about another one a little bit later. <laughs> but <laughs> I, 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 the I enjoy a lot of Oscar as Moon Knight, and I would enjoy to see him do more stuff as Moon Knight. Like yeah. the the show as a whole, like whatever. You can feel how you feel. Like, I liked him in that role. And I would like yeah. to see him. Yeah. See him do it more under a different director, a different tone, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I, I've i also heard the rumor. I don't know if it's actually a rumor. I think the director said that uh, had they given Jake a costume, it would have been a costume that I really like with the, like, the white chest plate. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and the I, black on it. Yeah, I did see that. Also, uh, designed by Declan Shalvey. Shout out to him. He did all the suits. He's that guy. They better be, they better be paying him because <laughs> he really like brought Moon Knight some hot designs. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I liked it. Y'all let us know what you guys think. Um, you know, mm-hmm. which one of us you agree with, which ones you don't. Um, if you've got a link to a Scarlet Scarab compilation, send them my way. I want to see them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and take a break and we'll come right back. Uh. 
All right, y'all. Welcome back to another relaunch. In this section, we are going to be talking about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And um, let's just go ahead and get straight into it, because this was a lot of movie, um, even mm-hmm. though it was only two hours long. What were your initial thoughts? <clears throat> also, before anybody, like, goes any further, we're going to be spoiling this, like, Oh yeah! So, oh yeah! We gonna be spoiling, spoiling baby. <laughs> I think um, we give our initial thoughts, and then I'll like take us through the plot. So, um, my initial thoughts are is that I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun movie. I think Elizabeth Olsen was acting her behind off, and that like anytime she was on screen, like you were really captivated. Her line delivery throughout was just like immaculate. Um, mm-hmm. I do think that the movie kind of did an even split of telling a story about Steven and Wanda. And I think in that regard, it hurt certain aspects. I feel like it did a good job at telling a story about both of them, as opposed to doing like a really great job telling a story about just one. Yes. Um, And with that, I just really loved, I, I, I loved like, again, all the stuff with Wanda and just like how the dark hold was corrupting her. And yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, so my initial thought were like, I will, <clears throat> I will never like shy away from just loving superhero bullshit. Like <laughs> I don't need it to be, I do love overly complicated or super like dramatic things. And, um, I also read nonfiction as well, but at the same time, I also really do like just superhero straight to the point stuff. Yeah. And what I liked about this movie was that we got right to the point. Like, yeah. um, every time movie, there was a stop. Once we started, and we kept going, and everything was to just move us along to the next thing um, in this movie. Mm-hmm. And um, I appreciate that. The one thing that I think, and I'll talk about this as we get more like into the plot, the thing that I think that may have been a detriment to it was for Strange's story, Wanda's was fine um, in this. Mm-hmm. I didn't think there was anything kind of really bad for her. Again, Lizzie showed off. Um, mm-hmm. I know she should be called <laughs> Emmy Olsen, because she was letting everybody know <laughs> this is why the Scarlet Witch is an Emmy nominated character <laughs> because yeah. uh, uh, I'm that girl and I appreciated her for, for that. Um, but I think that a lot of the stuff for Strange, as far as like kind of his emotional weight for his character, relied on us caring about Christine, and mm-hmm. I don't think a lot of us cared about Christine. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, I know that this sequel had to still use the stuff from the previous movie um, and kind of use not only the things from the previous movie, but everything that's happened to Strange since then, since the sequel wasn't like a direct follow up. And we had to like carry those emotions over us. And the first movie was about like, you know, him and Christine and Mm -hmm. and how he kind of like chose magic basically over her or his career basically over her. But like we haven't seen her since. Exactly. So it's not like she popped up in other things and we got to see their relationship crumble more or him like really yeah. them really driving home the fact that he was like doing something else instead of going to be with her. Yeah. Like we only saw that in her movie. So that kind of didn't hit. And I think a lot of his the emotional parts of his character kind of hit hindered on that. Yeah. Like I so I don't really know that. how much that was. I will say but outside I of that. Found... No, I loved it. Wanda cleared. Sorry. That line where she said, you know, um, it won't be Wanda that comes for her, it'll be the Scarlet Witch. I said, period. I said, absolutely. I know that's right. I said, let them know. (laughs) It's going to be a bad thing. Um, I will say, though, you know, they were doing, they went a lot horror esque in this movie. And I will say that some of the transitions I felt were a little bit jarring at certain times and didn't really hit with me. Um, but I did still love a lot of the horror stuff that came through. I really loved like when uh Strange took control of his dead body and like the souls of the dam came and they were like going into the eye and stuff like that. I thought that was really well done. And again Wanda was just like clear. Wanda was clear. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked a little bit more magic from her. Um again I know a lot of people 
people don't like Miss Maxim off of the MCU because she feels like she's biting off some other characters who have like a similar power set of telepathy and telekinesis. And they like really went into that on this movie because the doll was like moving things. She was in people's <laughs> minds. She was like getting into their heads. You know, they had to be like, shields up. Mind shields up. Go to fire yourself because like she's here. And she was doing her big blast and like, oh, she was getting that. Um, Shout out to her. She was getting she was She was clear. I'm sorry. Like, I have to say that my favorite superpower is psychic energy manipulation, psychokinesis. Like, when you're doing that, that is my favorite superpower. Yeah. So, like, MCU Wanda, to me, is a serve. <laughs> when she's not yeah. doing the magic stuff, I'm like, oh, my God, this is my favorite kind of power. And she was doing a lot of that in this. So I will admit, like, a lot of the action scenes for her, I have a bias for because it's my... I'm, watching my favorite superpowers yeah. be used. But again, Wanda, like, the line delivery was fantastic. She Listen, the, the strength of the House of M must never be questioned. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> and, it, and it was not in this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I yeah. can understand that. Well, she cleared it. But again, I, I would have liked a little bit more magic from her being, you know, the whole Scarlet Witch thing. But I see what we did. Um, how did you feel about America Chavez? Um, I like this version of America more than the comic book version. I personally do not like America Chavez in the comics. <laughs> I find her very annoying. Um. I don't like her like plucky attitude about stuff. I don't like the like very abrasive and like I'm just gonna run in and even though like everyone tells her to not do something, she does it anyway. She is a fist first um, kind of girl. Yeah, and I like a fist first kind of girl, but more of like a soldier than just like I'm just doing whatever I want to do. Yeah. Um. That's so funny. I kind of find her annoying in the comics. The version of her in this, she was the. They made her more generic, uh, mm-hmm. you know, with the, she's, she can't really control her power. She's like kind of running and scared more she was until running the end when she's terrified, she... like screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Wanda, Wanda was coming. <laughs> Wanda was coming. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure with her, like, it's probably terrifying too to like, you have this power that everybody wants to take from you. And like, once it's gone, you die. So, no fist first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I appreciate I do appreciate it that she kind of grew into that towards the end uh cuz she was giving one of the business <laughs> towards the end she did punch punching her, her in her time. face. <laughs> 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 no, like, so when she, like, punched Wanda the first time, and she was like, yeah, and then Wanda was like, mm-mm, and then she punched her again. <laughs> like, I cackle. <laughs> I cackle, too. That second punch is what got me, because Wanda was like, oh, wait, she's gonna hit me? And she punched her right again. <laughs> Ooh, that was funny. Yeah. Um. All right, let's go ahead and get into the plot of the story, though. We'll go through the, 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 the movie. So, like, it opens with America Chavez and an alternate Doctor Strange with a ponytail and the still the white stuff on the side of his head. And he's in his Defenders costume um, from the comics, which I personally think is probably my favorite Doctor Strange look. I don't mm-hmm. really like him with a cape. I'm also just not a big fan of capes. Um, although his asymmetrical one is hot. <laughs> I do. I do like that. <laughs> I do like it in, in the MCU. Um, but they're running and they're trying to get the Book of Vashanti. Now, in the comics, I'm not sure if it has the same kind of, like, uses as they're saying in the mm-hmm. MCU. It seems to be the antithesis of the Darkhold um, mm-hmm. in, in the MCU. I don't know what to do in the comics. You know, I don't really get down with the magic stuff. They just always talk about the Book of Vashanti is this thing. Um, mm-hmm. But whatever, that's there. So... Um, they're being chased by these monsters who are coming after um, America, and they finally get to contain this one monster, and Strange is like, I'm just going to take this girl's power myself. America starts to cry because she's like, you're supposed to be my friend. Like, you're, if you take my power, you'll kill me. Strange oh, is like, this, this is the only way. Like, I, I can't. I don't know what else to do. But he ends up being killed anyway <laughs> during that whole confrontation. Um, she, luckily enough, America opens a portal um, because she's scared and uh, flies through it and she ends mm-hmm. up in our universe. Mm-hmm. 
um, we wake up and we see that, like, uh, our Doctor Strange pretty much had been having that dream. Like, he dreamt all of that. Um, so he goes to the wedding of Christine. Mm-hmm. She's getting Christine is getting married to a nice black man that she met. And like you said, like, we don't, why would we care about that? Yeah. Like, and we were like, oh, we at her wedding. It was like, oh, she found love. It was like, oh, okay, good for her. I was like, okay. why would you? But it was also, I was looking at her like, why would you invite him here? Right. And then, you know, people people have people have connections that they just can't let go. And then when he started like confessing his love for her at the, I was just like, excuse me, at my wedding. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? Like, I'm I'm like, oh yeah, let me introduce you to my husband. He's a big fan. And oh no, actually, I gotta let you know, I still love you, and I've never stopped thinking. It's like, sir, what you want me to do about that right now? It's always it's a man. Late. It's always a man. It'd be too late. <laughs> um, so we get all that happens. Then Strange comes and helps Wong uh, to stop this monster from killing Sh- uh, America Chavez. She tells them that she has the power to travel the multiverse, but she doesn't really know how to control it. And that this thing has been like trying to come after her, these monsters. They notice on the monsters that there are runes on, um, on them. So Strange is like, I know somebody that knows runes. Let me go to Wanda. Mm-hmm. So he goes to Wanda and um, he realizes that, you know, hey, Wanda, like, I need some help with these runes. Like, what do you know about the multiverse? I know about this girl. And Wanda's like, oh, why don't you bring America here and we can help her. I can, like, protect her. <laughs> and it stops. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, wait a minute. I never told you never told me her name. <laughs> and Dr. Strange is like, I didn't. Like, damn, girl, I really came here to be your friend. Like, like truly, I, really, I thought I you were really going to help me. <laughs> <laughs> she releases the illusion that she had where there weren't any uh, flowers. It's just mm. chaos and, and demon magic. She um, and she basically lets them know, hey, I want my child. Um, I'm sorry, I want to go back to my children. I know there is a multiverse where I can go and be with them. Everyone could just leave me alone. I'll go there. Strange is constantly telling her like your kids aren't real. Like that's not the that's that's not what happened there. Um, he told her at one point, your kids are made of magic. Like they're not real. They're made of magic. She says every mother <laughs> does that. Like every mother's make the kid out of magic. Which I thought like, she cleared. Period. Period. Like, <laughs> what do you say? It's like yes, women. <laughs> we love yes. you. <laughs> it's like every mother does that. I <laughs> I love that. Um, so Wanda pretty much tells. Strange, if you, I want America, you have until sundown to give her to me, or I'm going to come to Comratage to give it. And she said, you know, if, what if we don't hand her over? She says, well, then it won't be Wanda you meet. You'll be meeting the Scarlet Witch. Cleared again. Just like, like every single time. She was shutting it down. So she ends up killing everyone basically at Comratage because she does attack. Um, Fantastic scene, by the way. Um. I loved all the fights and magic and stuff that they were using there. That whole part where she started looking at them and she was trying to break into their minds and she whispered in that boy's ear, run, mm. hot. I love, I mm. really, really love that scene. Um, so she attacks everyone there. Uh, America Chavez ends up teleporting herself and Strange across the multiverse into what they end up calling Earth at 838. Um, Maximoff, Wanda, ends up using the Darkhold to dreamwalk, which is, I guess, mm. this, like, spell that is in the Darkhold um, where you can enter the mind of yourself. Mm-hmm. Or, I guess it has to, is it always yourself? Did they say it has, it has always, yes. like, your own? It's, a, it's a, your alternate self, your variant. So you go into your variant from a different universe, and you're basically able to control them. It's not a permanent thing but you can like control them and but this can also cause like incursions within the timeline and stuff like that so that's what Wanda wants to do where she can go and live in a life where she takes over this other Wanda who is living you know with her brown hair as just Wanda (laughs) the real Wanda (laughs) (laughs) Um, so while there while she is dream walking um, you can't obviously be in, in the two places at once there is a, another sorceress who comes and she is, is trying to help 
Wong out, but she sacrifices herself, destroys the dark hold. Um, again, I'm terrified because Wanda is like not one to be played with it all throughout the entire movie. She is in every life in her path. She tosses Wong out of the out of a commentage and tells him, "Listen, you need to tell me what you know about the dark hold. I know you read it." Um, he's like, "You know, I will. I'm not gonna do anything. You'll have to kill me." She says, "No. How about them?" And she picks up multiple sorcerers and tortures them in front of him until he confesses that there is a place that you'll learn the spells from the Darkhold because the Darkhold is a copy. The originals were transcribed on this mountain and it was Mount Wondergore. Now, people may have remember before I had talked about during, I think, a Scarlet Witch the relaunch that I did for her and said that like she should just have like Mount Wondergore. Like that should yeah, just be her place. place. Yeah, her place. So shout out Maybe to the MCU listening. for listening. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate them for listening. Um, and it would be nice to kind of see that go into the comics too. I think that's just something that she should just kind of have her own kind of headquarters, a space to really do her dark magic stuff. <laughs> Not her dark magic. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> kind of what she is. <laughs> Uh, okay, so on back on our Earth, uh, they are trying to figure out things about how, what they're going to do with the dark hold. We flash back over to Earth 38, where we see that um, our Strange and Chavez have entered this universe where Doctor Strange is a hero, or he's been told, every, or at least everyone has been told that he's a hero. He sacrificed himself to kill Thanos. Uh, they run into Baron Mordo, who is the now the Sorcerer Supreme of that universe um and he is like oh we're friends like come inside Mm -hmm. but then it turns out he's actually a part of the illuminati and Mm -hmm. he says that you know your desecration of reality like you need to we know that scarlet witch isn't actually the biggest problem the biggest problem is you and we know that because in our universe dr strange was on the illuminati actually getting everyone together was his idea mm-hmm. and um he built this illuminati and it consisted of uh peggy carter mm-hmm. uh captain captain carter uh black bolt or king black agar voltagon captain maria rambo uh professor xavier and dr reed richards mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. and um I know I've already said it on here before that I wasn't the biggest mm-hmm. advocate for Krasinski being mm-hmm. Reed, but it is what it is because I know that my girl is coming with them. So <laughs> <laughs> you'll take it. I gotta be honest say, with you though. When he popped up on screen, I kind of wasn't moved like the way I thought I, I would be. And it's like, I don't know if it's just because everyone has been talking about it for so long and just trying to like campaign for it and got it so it happened. It's just kind of like, oh, okay, whatever. But I was just like, uh, okay. That's actually, you pretty much just summarized my feelings on it too. Like, I feel like I would have been, even though I knew already that Reed was going to be a part of the Illuminati on this council, <laughs> and I did already know that Krasinski was cast for that role, yeah. I think... Had it been a random actor, I would have been, oh, that's Reed. Because, again, everyone had been campaigning for it for so long mm-hmm. to the point where, like, some artists even draw, use yeah, his face as a model for Reed. Yeah, so, like, I, I, it didn't hit because it almost felt expected. And, again, before people get too excited, yes, I know the tea about how he is potentially, this is, like, a screen test. And, like, if fans love it, then they are going to bring him back as Reed for the 616. Which I'm sure they will. Right. I mean, if you've already got this many people like following it and wanting it, you might as well just yeah. give it to them. We'll see. Good for them. I'm fine because Emily is going to be sued. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be good. Oh, that'll be fantastic. So, um, that is like all of who the, the Illuminati is, and they pretty much tell him that Strange had used the dark, their Strange used the dark hold, um, and he basically became corrupted by it, and he caused an incursion. And shout out to Jonathan Hickman because a lot of his ideas are being used in the MCU. I'm not sure if it's because they were excellent, which I thought, or if it's just because they're just more recent. And you know, we talk about a lot of things about like going back too far. And it feels like it feels like the MCU is picking up only within the last like 
20 to 30 years of comics as far as events and stuff go. Um, while they'll look for the previous eras for the characters and their maybe their characterizations, but stories, it seems like they kind of are pulling those from more recent yeah. comics and stuff from back in the day. Um, but we'll see what goes on there. But they talk about that Strange um, was causing an incursion and they decided to kill him to prevent anything from else happening. He wanted to, he admitted that he's like, you know, I'm corrupted by this. I need to go. And that's when Black Bolt comes in and says, I'm sorry. Black Bolt, again, was cast by, I think his name is uh, Anson. I forget his last name, but he was the actor who was cast as Black Bolt previously in the Inhuman show. Um, I say he which, show, right? Yeah, I didn't watch. Um, I, I do didn't like the Inhuman. I don't mind. I don't mind them. Um, I didn't watch that. He did look cool as Black Bolt. Um, and I'm glad, I'm sure he... I'm sure he wanted to be Black Bolt. I remember at the time when mm-hmm. he was cast, he was like super excited about it. I think he talked about learning sign language and everything, and he was excited to be joining the MCU. So I'm glad that he was able to just kind of like actually put a suit on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because him coming up as sorry and the use of his powers was really, really cool. And, uh, I like the humans, especially when they're more like a Game of Thrones with superpowers kind of I don't really like the Inhumans. I like Crystal, though. Oh, Crystal's great. Crystal's Um, fun. Crystal's fun. fun. Um, And we'll see what they end up doing with uh, Kamala Khan in Ms. Marvel, Mm -hmm. because she's in. Uh, But anywho, now that we're at the Illuminati and uh, they get this warning that Another woman is there, and it, it is Scarlet Witch, but it is our Scarlet Witch dream walking through the uh, other Wanda, and she is clearing it uh, again. Clears it basically <laughs> from there. Clears it all. Pretty much takes out everybody in front of her. They try to stop her initially. Uh, Reed comes up to her. He's like, you know, I've got kids of my own. She says, um, you know, do they have a mother? <laughs> is she alive? He says, yes which like sent me to the moon. And then she Mm -hmm. says, good, because (laughs) they will have someone to take care of them. And from there, she ends everybody. Because Reed says, what are you going to do, Wanda? Um, With just one shout of his voice, Black Bolt will, all he has to do is open his mouth and Black Bolt will take you out. (laughs) 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 What mouth? She said, "What, what mouth? And um, I thought it was interesting because, like, Black Bolt's powers are like the, you know, the sonic stuff when he opens his mouth and they're insanely powerful, that his mouth was removed. But because he was so, like, frightened from it, that made him make a sound with his vocal cords. So, like, all of that energy (laughs) backed up and his head exploded. Boom, boom. Then a fight breaks out. Shout out to, you know... Captain Maria Rambo for shutting it down. I mean, for holding it down for the Captain Marvel clan, even though she ended up dying at the end anyway. But she lasted for a while. And her um, death was kind of weird to me. I don't know. Was the emphasis supposed to be that because she didn't have on her helmet, she was crushed to death? Because I feel like I getting, so. seeing her getting tossed through these walls and like do all of this stuff and like come back is fine. So I don't really feel like that thing falling on her would have been her demise. It also. I couldn't tell if they were trying to say that she didn't have super strength. Super strength. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if they're just, just blasting. She was only blasting. She was flying and stuff, but she was only only blasting. Mm. I don't know. And, and we've seen Captain Marvel like lift things and obviously get hit by Thanos. And so I don't know if that was just showing the differences in, you know, the universes that not everything is a one for one. Um and that Maybe this Captain Marvel is just, or, or what if they were trying to show you a little bit of like Monica? Monica's not super strong; she's mm-hmm. just energy forms, you know. Oh, that could be a nice little hand. I see what you're saying. I see mm-hmm. what you're going for. I'm mm-hmm. into it. You see the see that I'm trying to get to? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me know if y'all agree with me there and what you think. But I thought that the fights were interesting. Uh, <laughs> Captain Carter getting sliced in half was. Yeah, that Something. was bad. But, but she was she was she was working. Shout out to her. She you was know, trying. Yeah. She was <laughs> she like was she trying. came in with the little shield and she hit uh Wanda in the face. It was like, oh, go off, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she was winning. I like 
part when it was quiet when she was like running through. Yeah, that was hot. And even the part where she hit her own little, you know, I could do this all day. I was like, I know mm-hmm. that's, you know, I know a lot of people hate Captain Carter, but I don't know. I think she's fine, but she also brings in my girl. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's I'm biased. True. I don't I know. I think you might have a little bias because a certain <laughs> Braddock is definitely always related to them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. I think she's all right. Like she does what she does. <laughs> she stays in her own little corner, in her own little world. And mm-hmm. whatever. She does her thing over there. Uh, but she did not make it out against Wanda. Uh, Wanda <laughs> played the entire, <laughs> the entire Illuminati. The Xavier scene lets me know that um, I'm glad he was able to be in that yellow chair. But I hope, I hope with the entire Illuminati that we all get to move on. Like, we saw this. We don't need to bring any more of these actors back from <laughs> from the past or anything it. like. Let's just keep that done. Um, he looked great. He tried to you know help Wanda out in her mind until she snapped his neck. So um, yeah, he went to the white hot room and found the other Wanda that was in, <laughs> in her moment. It wasn't the hot white room. They said it was um, inside of her mindscape. She was helping. <laughs> Let her have something. <laughs> I found Wanda. Um, but no, I did. So the thing I did like about um, his Xavier, and it kind of makes me a little bit more optimistic about the mutants in the MCU. I love the way that they showed an effect for his telepathy. Yeah, me too. Actually, I really appreciate that. It was giving Aquaman, but I I appreciated that there was some kind of effect. It's a visual medium, and I yeah. know telepathy is one. Um, and sometimes telekinesis too. Like they are, they never show those like those invisible powers. So I appreciated that they were showing some kind of visual. Yeah, agreed. So I really like that about it. And his, his little scene was nice, you know. Well, and again, I think that was one of the times where like the horror thing was used well because when the cloud was coming up on him, the scarlet cloud, and then like demon wanda popped out and like snapped his neck, and then we saw it snap in real life. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. Wanda kind of cleared everybody out. <laughs> like, well, yeah. was like the witch has got it. She's doing what needs to be done. I don't know what I don't know. I don't know why you guys thought you were gonna like be able to beat her off. <laughs> and she she told y'all she was being reasonable. She did. <laughs> like you could have just given her the girl. But um Strange, Chavez, and Palmer are like running away and they try to escape Wanda. They finally get some space between her. They break into the uh, like there's like a wayward point that their strange earth. 838 strange hid the book of Ashanti. Yeah. Or a little wayward point to get to it. So they get there, but as soon as they get there, Wanda ends up showing up and um she pulls America by her hair <laughs> and drags her. <laughs> she her up. You know, when I saw her like red on the hair and like hair? back, I was like, oh wow, she's mad. <laughs> <laughs> she grabbed her by her hair, pulled it back. And was gonna like take her powers from her. Um, she tries to take over her mind actually first and opens all these portals. She pushes uh, Strange and Christine into this other universe where an incursion had already happened. While she pretty much takes, she kicks <laughs> um, um, Chavez through a portal, then just like releases the other Wanda and just like leaves her there. <laughs> and it's like whatever. I got the. I've got uh, America Chavez, so it's it's cool. I guess other Wanda. Good luck to you. <laughs> so and sorry. She was fine. She went right. She said it. She was like, "Oh my boys," and she just flew on out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she flew on back home, back to her her kids. Um, meanwhile, Wanda starts the uh, the spell to take America's powers from her, and our strange and uh, Earth thirty eight. Earth 838, Christine Palmer are in the other universe, and he pretty much has a new battle with that universe's mm-hmm. uh, Doctor Strange, who was he was the guard of the Darkhold, and he like obviously was corrupted by it because that's that's pretty yeah. much the entire premise of this movie is that the duck the Darkhold corrupts you, and we got to stop stop the person who has been corrupted by it. Um, so he has this really cool, in my opinion, fight with his dark self via music and using like musical notes to kind of magically fight each other yeah. which was, was really cool that was um cool. but 
by the time they beat him, he decides I'm going to use the dark hold myself because they get back to the own universe. He says, I'm going to use the dark hold to dream walk into my corpse self from the beginning of the movie um, and use him. Um, he ends up using this like zombie version and finding the strength after Christine tells him that, you know, you are the Sorcerer Supreme. The spirits are attacking you, but use them like you are magic, like <laughs> you use mm-hmm. them. So he ends up using these spirits and controlling them, basically. That was Takes cool on scene. Wanda. I thought that was a really cool scene. And the way that the like spirits made the cape around yeah. him and all that, stuff, that was really cool. Um, so they go... And he tries to rescue America. He says, you know, I'm not going to take your power, America. She said, you know, I'm ready for it. That's what you feel like you need to do. I understand that, like, that's what needs to happen. He's like, no, I believe in you. And I believe that you can do what you can do. And that's when she gets her, becomes America Chavez from the comics. And she's, like, ready to punch stars yeah. into stuff. She basically gives Wanda what she asked for. She opened the portal to them kids. She walks through and the kids are terrified because she's yeah. a monster. <laughs> and she's <laughs> and they're like terrified of her and they're like no I'm not a monster she's they start throwing their toys at her mm-hmm. and, and she's like stop and like gets really angry and she's like I'm not a monster I'm a mother um and the other Wanda is like you know mm-hmm. I'm gonna protect my kids she walks up to her and tells her you know know that they'll be loved like you need to go back home um yeah. she goes back really and she, nice. It was like, you I know, again, if there's one thing that's going to be consistent about Wanda throughout the multiverse, she's going to let them boys. Yeah. And she's going to take I, care of them. And I was like, I, I, thought, I, I just thought that was like a really nice thing where she was like, you know, of course, this is something I should be mad about. You like took me over. You were doing all this stuff. You had this idea. But it's like at the root of it all, you just want your boys and you want to have that happiness. And like, I understand that because I would probably do the same. <laughs> she crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she Wanda goes back to our Earth, Earth 616, decides that this needs to stop. So she says, I'm the one that opened the dark hold. I need to close it. So she lifts Mount Wondergore and then completely slams it and yeah. destroys it and also destroys every copy of the dark hold throughout the multiverse. So uh, that's all done. Then we have, I'm not sure what happens to Wanda there. You know, there is a rule in in filmmaking that if you didn't, or just in storytelling, actually, that if you didn't see the character die, then they didn't die and that they can come back. So who knows if she did die under all that rubble? You know, after the entire mountain came down, there was that big, like, red, like, energy burst. And who knows if that was her teleporting herself somewhere or some kind of magic thing. Or who knows, Kathan could have come back. They talked about, they mentioned his name in the in Wonder Gore and talked about how like this was his magic and like this was his stuff. So I thought that was actually really cool. Kind of tie yeah. it back to Wanda and making sure people reminding people that she's magic. Um, yeah. so later we see uh Maximoff after all the damage that she did to Comertage is being fixed up by the sorcerers. America Chavez is kind of joined up. Again, she's being like, you know, the aggressive little teenager that is not getting I thought that was weird too. Like her learning magic with them. I don't know if I need that. I I don't think that's what's gonna happen because they. I felt like they were intentional about showing that she did not have like what? an affinity for it. Like she wasn't good in it. Yeah. Um. Um. She and she kept saying like, "Why is it so hard? Like this isn't for me." So I think they're gonna stick to her. You know, punching yeah. portals. She's already a MacGuffin with that. I don't think she needs to be a bigger one with magic. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so then Strange, as he is, uh, the movie's ending, he ends up like developing a third eye, like mm-hmm. we saw previously early in the movie, um, from his dream walking. But it'll be interesting to see what that means because all the dark holes are gone. I don't mm-hmm. know what I couldn't understand what the third eye meant. I mean, yeah, I didn't either. I, I won't lie. I'm not. I thought that was just a magic thing that I didn't get. I'm not a big. I'm not a big strange guy, so I don't know if that's like the only time I really tap into his stories if I know Kali is going to be in them. And so I can't like pay, I haven't paid too much attention to know if this is like a storyline that he's had before or if it's just like something that's just happening for this first time. But, mm-hmm. you know, 
it looked cool, I guess. And again, I think it kind of showed that there's some influence there from the dark hole. Yeah. I wonder if anybody was dreamwalking through him. Mm, that could be it. I don't know. But either way, speaking of Clea, uh, a mid credit thing happens, and there's this portal that opens up, and this woman pops out in front of Doctor Strange, and is like, you need to come with me because you are... Like all of your actions have triggered an incursion and it has to stop. And she like has this magic knife. Mm-hmm. She reopens, reopens this portal mm-hmm. and um, you can see the dark image and it's obviously Clea. And they <laughs> have, <laughs> they have cast uh, Charlie Theron to take the role of Clea, which I am like, and that's dope. Let me tell you, I was in the theater and even before I had saw the movie, like I had a bunch of people like, Talk, calling me, uh, texting me, DMing me like, oh, I saw the movie and you're going to love the post credit scene. You're going to like be all about it. It's yours. And I'm just like, all right, let me see what everybody's talking about. It's probably not even going to be that like dope or like it's kind of overhyped and I'm not going to see anything. When mm-hmm. I tell you, she walked up and I visibly gagged. Same. I said, oh, bitch. Like, <laughs> out loud. <laughs> it was so crazy the way that it happened. I was just like, oh, they're playing with me right now. I, I wasn't expecting my girl. But- and then, then when she did her little psychic knife thing, I was like, oh, mm. it's giving Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to get you. And it was, was purple. Like, absolutely <laughs> Betsy. And yeah. I was like, I was like, yeah. yeah. I can't believe I can't believe they are doing this. And it, it gave me like, all right, like this is this is the the test CGI. Yes, exactly. It was like, this is what I need. And I was like, I sat there for I want to say maybe a good eight minutes or so with just my hands over my mouth with like mm. shock. Just because it happened. Yeah. And when she first walked up, <laughs> and it was like a double whammy because it's on the one hand, like everybody knows I'm a huge Charlize Theron fan. Like that is my girl. That's my action doll. I'm always here about That's her. That's the doll, yeah. African you know, queen. African queen. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, like, it like all took a second to kind of register for me because it was like, oh, wait, that's Charlize. And then it was like, oh, wait, she's clear. Yeah. And it was like, then she did the little knife thing. And it was like, oh, wait, that's Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, wow. I was like, oh, wow. And it was just like super exciting to see her. And I just like, it was like, yeah. And again, you think about Clea right now and kind of the rise she's having in the comics and she's doing stuff. And Strange, again, is a really great title. I think everybody should go and pick it up if you're in the comics. Or even if you're not, you just kind of want to like get to know her. Like, this is the perfect time to jump into that to support and see it grow. And so it's like, of course she was going to pop up. And I'm like kind of glad. Know, why did not think of that? <laughs> I'm so glad we beat the whole Christine is actually going to turn out to be clear allegations because that is not what I wanted. Yeah, I did. I was in that camp. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> when when Doctor Strange first came out, I was like, oh, are they just naming Clea Christine? Yeah. Okay. I thought, I thought it was an Agatha Agnes thing, you know? Yeah, I'm glad we beat that. So Charlize... Clea. Damn, got Charlize. Like, and, it's, <laughs> and, it's, and it's so exciting because it's like, hey, again, I like Clea and I like Charlize. And it's just like, damn, what a casting. Yeah. And I think what's so cool about that casting is, you know, she was already, like, reached out before to be um, in the MCU. Mm. I think she was, I think she was on the short list to be um, Captain Marvel. Oh. Um, but I think she passed on it to do something else. But again, it makes me wonder if she passed on that because she wanted maybe some like smaller character. And not to say that like Clea is not important, but like she's not as like in the forefront there. You know yeah. what I mean? And it could be something that is like, oh, this character is something I can like bring a lot more to and like elevate and like yeah. bring out to the forefront. So now Clea is going to become like a big like Damn. household name. Yeah. And ooh, like she said, she ain't like with the press. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. She gave, she gave you inches too. So yeah, and she and I yeah. and again, I just love the whole energy she just had when she walked up to see. She was like, "Look, she, you caused an incursion, slice the hole in the reality. You come in, it's like, oh girl, how mm. you? Who are you? What you? Where you going? <laughs> no, yeah. I'm a cop. And I think, 
I've I've listened to other like podcasts and stuff about the MCU and especially I like listening to some where they, it might be like their first time ever experiencing any stuff from people who don't even read comic books and a lot of people who aren't as like super into this stuff as we are they do like the romance stuff mm-hmm. in movies they just like like to watch that stuff develop and I personally would prefer Clea and Strange over Strange and Christine. Oh, so hundred percent. Less, less, less. Yeah. I'm sorry. I love Rachel McAdams, but the Christine yes. thing didn't work. Like we can nip that in the bud. The Queen is here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I do, I do think they're definitely gonna have them develop a, a love story, a, a relationship between the two of them. Um, but I, I could see it being something a lot different than the comics. Because I recall you telling me that they were, they're married in the comics, but like, <laughs> she is, she's, she's like never around. Yeah, they, they <laughs> I feel, got I feel like and she's just always been in the dark dimension. They've never like officially got divorced, so they were technically always married, even when he was over there in Captain Marvel doing what he did. Cheer. Cheer. Men. <laughs> Men. <laughs> <laughs> you got a whole wife in another dimension. It's always men. <laughs> in, That's anyway. Um, I do think that their relationship in the MCU will be something more of like she's someone that like gives him shit and like he's like has to back down to yeah i can see that for sure we might see like you know, a that, version of them where they are married so like that can be a little cute easter egg or something um mm. but okay and, and we'll probably even have like the relationship build up for them but you know mm. strange is, i feel like he's gonna be out the door soon and it's just gonna be the clear show so now that's what you want, <laughs> because <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch recently just in an interview said that he's he will do this for the next ten years. Well, we'll you see. Wanna I do wonder what's next for Wanda, because mm-hmm. I don't think you have a character as popular as the Scarlet Witch, mm-hmm. or like as or as good as Elizabeth Olsen, and you yeah. just kind of like. I don't see her going anywhere. I, th- I think she's gonna stick around for sure. Mm-hmm. I think and, and you don't know. We don't know. We could see like brown hair Wanda again. Maybe like she did actually kill herself on Wanda Gore, and then like brown hair Wanda like comes back as like the new Wanda Scarlet Witch. She got her boys already, so that's another way to bring them two back, so they can be young Avengers. From a, so from another from another universe. This is why I don't like the multiverse. I don't so like <laughs> they can <just> bring, <laughs> bring anybody back. Like it's uh, it's there's room for everyone. They're gonna have to do something with uh, America mm. because now she's she is now the ultimate plot hole. I like, mean, but even so, like just look at Clea. Clea did something. She had to get here some type of way. How she know about incursions and all that? How is she getting to these places? Mm. Well, that's she can like got magic or whatever to do it, mm. right? But I'm just saying, like anybody at this point, and. Other other are aren't other dimensions different than other like universes? I don't think so. Right? No. Like the dark dimension <laughs> would be different. The dark dimension is a different Oh you're talking different about different than yes. reality. Yeah. Yes. But like So like she's only going through like different dimensions if they're going different realities. if you cause an incursion it had to be through different realities oh yeah that doesn't mean she's going through different realities she may just have known that like oh this incursion is happening and it only happens if a reality is messed up um, we'll I see think, i'll be there for the i'll be there for the next one so <laughs> we'll see multiverse, we can bring anybody back um what did you how would you rate this movie I'd give it a solid, uh, like, out of five. Mm-hmm. I'd give it a solid 4.5 out of five. 4.5 out of five, you say? Yeah. I enjoyed Same. it a lot. Again, I think there were some parts that didn't work. I, I think it did a good job. At I'm going to go see it in, like, an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go see it again in an hour. <laughs> it's like, I did enjoy it a lot. I really liked a lot of stuff with Wanda. Again, I do think the strange stuff was the weakest, and it could have told, like, a better story about just one of them as opposed to a good story about both. Um, but, like, it gave. I think, again, when you think of just, like, superheroes and, like, big stuff, and, like, this is kind of what you expect from mm-hmm. 
these type of movies and these type of events. Like, this is supposed to be a big culmination of, like, all these things that have happened with reality and, like, Wanda and, like, she's a big villain. And it's like, yeah, okay, she's powerful. Let's see that. Let's get into action. I, did I prefer I prefer that the movies go more that route, like, going forward. Um, I think outside of No Way Home. Yeah. Right. This was the first sequel to anyone in the first in this phase where they're mm-hmm. kind of like pushing everything forward from what was happening in the past. And mm-hmm. I hope like going forward, they use Multiverse of Madness as like, OK, this was two hours. They went straight to the point. That's what this like big movie thing is for. If you want, you know, more stuff of the character, give them shows. It's yeah. like the comics. I yeah. want the movies to feel like the summer events or whatever event, really. And um the shows the like the story. The shows, the shows are the ongoings, or the you know, the miniseries or an annual. I like it. I'm not a <laughs> you know, to yeah. speak in comic book terms. I would, I'm okay with the movies being just like, let's get to the point mm-hmm. and show me the stuff. I support it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it was. I thought it was pretty great overall. Um, the extra, the final credit scene was cute. Um. If people don't know who that was, uh, the director of the so, of the movie is Sam Raimi, and he is really good friends with Bruce Campbell. And Bruce Campbell did all of the um, uh, what's the horror movies where he's got one arm and a chainsaw? Evil Dead. He did all the the Evil Dead movies, and I think Sam Raimi also did those too. And like they're friends, and pretty much like he puts he put his friend in all his stuff. <laughs> so that that was his friend. I would do this. I respect you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Listen, if I do a movie, you better show up. <laughs> <Period>. <laughs> okay, put on whatever you got to do, know your lines, and be a little scene for me because you're my friend. So um, I thought the, the final scene was cute. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Fantastic. I thought it was a great movie. Um, I'm excited for, for more. Shout out to The Magic Corner. Y'all got another hit. <laughs> I don't know what to tell I'm you. Give it, I'm gonna give it to you. <laughs> Y'all got another hit. You got another hit. Thank you. Um, okay, that brings us to the end of the show. Please make sure you rate and subscribe us wherever you get your podcasts. We really appreciate all the comments and stuff. And uh, we will be adding some new stuff next week and switching up nice. some of the segments. And we really appreciate all the feedback you guys have been giving us. So uh, we're going to try to incorporate some of that in there. But in the meantime, you can catch us on Twitter and Instagram at Another Relaunch. You can find us if you want to watch along at Another Relaunch TV on YouTube. You can find me on all social media platforms at Uncanny LZ. Keenan, where can they find you? You guys know you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Keena Lance. As always, there's an underscore at the end. Boom. All right, y'all, let's get up out of here, and I'm about to go see Multiverse of Madness again. Ooh, I think I might actually go get tonight. Wait for you. Wait for you.